Visible from space, the Great Lakes are a precious natural resource critical for our survival. The Great Lakes are the largest source of fresh water in the world. In the 1850s, um, the settlers went to dig for water and instead they ended up finding oil. This was the real beginning of the boom in Sarnia and the, the industrial uh, revolution part for Sarnia. 100 years of industrial and urban development took a toll on the St. Clair River and other areas around the Great Lakes. In 1987, due to severe environmental degradation, the St. Clair River was identified as an area of concern under the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement between Canada and the U.S. So the International Joint Commission went to throughout the Great Lakes in the 1980s and they discovered that there were contaminated sites uh, all through the Great Lakes. There were 43 of them, which were called areas of concern. So these areas of concern were commonly referred to as pollution hotspots. So as you can imagine, these were areas that were uh, highly degraded um, based on 14 criteria or environmental uh, challenges. It's otherwise known as beneficial use impairments. So in the St. Clair River, this means that the water quality or the aquatic environment was not able to sustain beneficial uses uh, either by humans or by aquatic organisms. Of the 14 BUIs, nine were impaired and three required further assessment to determine if they were impaired or not. In 1995, a remedial action plan for the St. Clair River was created to recommend specific actions to restore the health of the river. The remedial action plan is really the cleanup plan. It is the plan that is made at the local level with all the partners from the federal, provincial, municipal, non-government organizations. Um, and it really lays out what needs to be done to, to address these impairments. One of the most noticeable impairments to the St. Clair River was the loss of fish and wildlife habitat. There are seven specific habitat restoration targets for the St. Clair River area of concern and there has been remarkable progress both in creating new habitat and enhancing existing habitat. Fish habitat was altered and lost with the installation of sheet pile walls along the river's shoreline. Recognizing the value of natural shorelines that will still prevent erosion and withstand ice and waves, many sections of the river have been naturalized. The sheet pile walls have been removed and replaced with natural stone and vegetation, offering fish refuge and a source of food. We have 64 kilometers of the St. Clair River that's been identified as an area of concern. Um, where you're seeing right now, we're at Guthrie Park. Before the, the shoreline uh, construction had started, uh, imagine steel retaining walls along the entire reach of Guthrie Park that does not offer any habitat benefits. So when you install armor stone, the gaps between the armor stone rocks are going to act as pockets for fish and habitat to thrive. We have seen the, the diversity of the native species. We have seen minks just run along the shoreline. We have seen the spiny soft turtles basking along the shoreline. Guthrie Park project was a huge success. We've had a lot of interest in neighboring communities wanting to utilize similar uh, construction method all across uh, the area. Wetland creation and enhancements are a source of pride for the Canadian Remedial Action Plan implementation team. Partnerships with Walpole Island First Nation and other private landowners have resulted in the successful completion of several projects, including several coastal wetland projects in Mitchells Bay and on Walpole Island. For the last 20 years, we've um, created or enhanced 140 hectare of wetlands in the St. Clair River area of concern. That means coastal wetlands that once existed in the Mitchells Bay area, we went in and fixed them up basically by spraying, um, spraying the Phragmites, creating some wetlands when there was low water and um, just increasing the amount of acreage we can get. So a lot of the results that we've noticed are um, a tremendous amount of different types of birds, amphibians and reptiles, and it also um, stops a lot of flash flooding. Habitat restoration is really tough to achieve if you don't get private landowners on board and um, certainly we would not have been able to meet our habitat target had it not been for these partnerships with Walpole Island community. I mean, and, this, and the same with, with private landowners. 
Elevated levels of bacteria in the river were responsible for beach closures and degraded the aesthetics of the river. However, through municipal infrastructure upgrades, bacteria levels are low and the aesthetic charm of the river has returned. Back in the 70s, proper sewage treatment was not a very high priority in, as opposed to obtaining development. They only did the villages proper. They didn't do the areas in between the villages where people continued to build and build on septic systems and some, if, they, if the house was old enough, may have just been a pipe to the river. Sarnia had a tremendous problem with the combined sewers and during a storm event, the gush of rainwater overwhelms what the plant can handle. That affects, affected the aesthetics, which is, which is a beneficial use impairment because the river just didn't look right. Didn't, it, it, it was unpleasant in many times of the year. I suppose the biggest thing we had accomplished here would be the wastewater treatment plant here at Courtright. Sarnia's been doing, I think, a pretty good job of rebuilding every street from the sewers up. We did surveys with uh, fishermen and users of the river, and uh, there was widespread agreement that the aesthetics in the river is, is in really good shape. You don't have the scum from the sewage plants floating on top of the river like the, you did back in the 80s and early 90s, and it's because, of the, it's because of the work that's been done. Scientific monitoring and studies are instrumental in determining the status of beneficial use impairments. Monitoring of wetlands, water quality, and fish contaminant levels, as well as focused studies to assess sediment quality, the frequency of liver tumors in bottom-dwelling fish, and deformities in aquatic wildlife provide evidence of the river's recovery. Each department has played a critical role in providing scientific expertise in, um, in, in doing studies and doing monitoring. It's really satisfying to see uh, plans come to life and research get done and results come in that are positive. And it's really been great to collaborate with um, our First Nation communities and we are in the unique situation of having two First Nations. So there's that traditional knowledge that has also been really important, particularly in some of the fish and wildlife related DUIs, we have the traditional knowledge and the and the scientific monitoring. And I think those two things combined really present a compelling case for the condition of the river. Water and sediment quality has also improved as contaminant loads from the industrial sectors have been reduced by 75%. This dramatic decline was due in large part to environmental protection regulations as well as voluntary measures followed by industry to help clean up the river. So environmental legislation really was instrumental in cleaning up the St. Clair River and other areas around the Great Lakes. One of the best examples of policy that came forward was the Municipal Industrial Strategy for Abatement, which monitored and controlled the effluent of nine industrial sectors. NISA really was instrumental in uh, reducing the contaminants that were once free-flowing into the river. Once you start regulating the input, it's amazing how resilient the river is. And through the monitoring that we've done, we have seen a dramatic decline in the contaminant loads in fish and wildlife, meaning this program really worked. The chemical industry did a few, several things, but the one that relates to Sarnia directly is something called responsible care. There's an external pair of eyes that every three years they go to the companies and they do, uh, it's not an audit, it's a verification, and they talk about the ethic of responsible care. So these reports that come out are public domain and they have been for over 20 years. So that was one approach how the chemical industries uh, addressed all of these horrible things that were happening in the environment. And today, over 60 countries in the world have adopted responsible care. But it started here in Sarnia with the chemical executives in this area. In the 1980s, there were significant improvements made to monitoring technologies for emissions and for environmental impact. As the new information came in, industry responded with making change to process, bringing in new technologies, and enhancing their response programs. We had industry working with the community, working with regulators, and sharing information, monitoring, and that was our continuous improvement loop over time. 
I think it's really important that we, that, that we recognize that good science and community feedback is what drives the continuous improvement loop in Sarnia Lambton. Uh, everyone that's involved with the AOC project here for this river should take great pride in how we've all come together to protect the watershed. In the last 30 years, thanks to a concerted effort between federal, provincial, and municipal governments, along with NGOs, industry, and community partners, seven of the 12 beneficial use impairments have been redesignated to not impaired. A key priority for the Remedial Action Plan Implementation Committee is to clean up the remaining contaminated sediments in the river. The St. Clair River is really on the road to recovery, and it's so exciting to see how, how far we've come uh, and uh, we still have a ways to go, but we have a plan and we're following that plan and uh, we will get there uh, in the not too distant future. The goal of redesignation of the AOCs is not to take us back to the 1700s where the water was pristine. We're never gonna get to that. The goal is simply that the St. Clair River is no different than any of the other non-AOCs. The good news is that if you stop hurting the river, it will recover. And essentially that's what this has been about. It's about, about giving the river a chance to heal itself and, uh, and uh, things, to, uh, things to improve. Yeah, we have seen a lot of improvements. Overall, it's been a very positive experience. The RAP has been around for longer than 30 years. And uh, saying that, we've met our BUI for the habitat delisting criteria. That's a good thing that we've met that criteria and uh, it's gonna be delisted hopefully soon. You know, pretty wild, right? <laughs>